I ordered no contact. And when I say no contact, I mean no contact. Yes, ma'am, but I never contacted her. I, All right. I went to her mother's house. All right. Thank you. Brent. I'm sorry, Ronald Roland Rodriguez, who was placed on community supervision in 2023, CR 0531, for the offense of assault, family choking, strangulation, on March 6, 2023, for a term of eight years. Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, any objection to the state reading the allegation and the defendant answering true or not true in both motions? All right, state. The allegation in both motions is violated. Position number 25, honor about the 23rd day of March 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Ronald Roland Rodriguez, defendant there, uh, direct, defendant there directly or indirectly contact the victim and or the victim's family of his event without the courts and or the division officer's authorization in violation of condition number 25. How do you plead to that in each cause number, true or not true? True. And the state will waive and abandon the other allegations in both. Uh, Any objections to the state's waivers? No objection. Right. Did you understand by pleading true to violation 25 and cause number 2023 CR 0529, the court could grant the motion and sentence you up to eight years in prison? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition 25? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find violation of condition number 25 and that cause number true. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 25 and cause number 2023 CR0531, uh, the court could find it true, grant the motion and sentence you up to eight years in prison? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true in that cause number? Yes, Your Honor. Then in that cause number, the court will find it true. Uh, is there an agreement? Yes, Your Honor. The agreement is uh, that you grant the motion and revoke the community supervision and sentence the defendant to two years in TDC in both cases. Uh, sentences to run concurrently. And um, taking that into consideration, Your Honor, the state and defense or, or the state is submitting a motion to dismiss or, or reject um, night mag number 6126, six, I'm sorry, 712695. That is the agreement, Your Honor. And what is 712695? And evading arrest second amendment. All right. Anything you wish to say, uh, Mr. Rodriguez? Um, we're on it. All right. In each cause number, the court will grant the motion, find you guilty. In each cause number, they were one concurrent. And each cause number, there's an affirmative finding of family violence. And in cause number 2023, CR0531, there is to be and in each cause number, the court is going to sentence you to 10 years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. Yeah, it was two years. Oh, no, I know. I'm not following that agreement. Well, then we, we would like to test here now. No, I asked him if he understood by pleading true that the court doesn't have to follow an agreement. The court could sentence him up to eight years in prison. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. You can only get eight years now. By pleading true. You certification of defendant's rights to appeal. You can only get eight years now. I'm sorry, eight years. That's okay. what I gave him, eight years in each cause number. You gave him 10 years. No, I gave him eight years. So it can be clear in each cause number, I'm granting the motion, finding you guilty. Sentence you to eight years in the prison. The cause numbers were run concurrent. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. No contact with Hannah Barnes. 
And each cause number, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's right to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? All right. You do have a limited right to appeal. And that right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motions, not the fact that you were on community supervision. Because this is a felony conviction, because this is an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. You want to say something? Sure. The reason why I did not take the probation again was because I did try contacting my probation officer and I tried. And the reason why I went over there was to get my ID and my social to get my SSI money to pay for the monitor to be on probation. And I contacted my probation officer, left email, phone numbers. They never contacted me back. I even went in there and they scheduled me a new probation officer. And I was trying to do everything that I was supposed to do. You're not supposed to have any contact. And I, and I clearly yes, put that in my motions. And I went to the, I went to her mother's house to pick up my stuff and she just happened to be there. So that's why I left. I didn't go there intentionally knowing that he was going to be there at her mother's house. I needed that documents to pay for my monitor to be on probation. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I didn't want any of this to happen. That's, and the reason why I took the two years was deal was because I, I mean, I didn't want to have to go through the, all this commun miscommunication. Yeah. Like I went to do my, you, let me just explain something to you. You were on probation yes, for an assault family second violation, yes, which means there was a previous conviction of assault family second. And you were also on probation for choking. Provision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand that? Are you the same Arthur Scarborough who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2019, CR 8528, for the offense of aggravated sexual assault of a child on March 28, 2022, for a period of 10 years? Is that you? Yes. State? Violated condition number 13B on or about the 24th day of August 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Arthur Etoku Scarborough did then and there fail to comply with the instructions of the Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Department Sex Offender Program and that the defendant failed to comply with the instructions of the Lone Star Offender Treatment Program, his court order sex offender treatment program, and that the defendant was suspended from sex offender treatment for failing to admit responsibility for his offense in violation of condition number 13. How do you think to that, true or not true? True. And the state would waive and make an remaining allegation. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition uh, 13B, court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you to life in prison and up to $10,000 fine? That's true. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to 13B? That's true. Court will find uh, 13B true. Is there an agreement? There is not, Your Honor. All right, State, what are you requesting? So, this is a case where I think Mr. Stoltenancy would like to present first, potentially, um, because it really are part of our argument is going to depend on um, the potentially new willingness to admit certain culpabilities. And so, um, you know, from the state's perspective, you know, if he's willing to take some responsibility, that might lend itself to him being continued on probation with some type of um, uh, like ISF. Um, but if he's not, then the issue becomes for us, is what do we do with this person who is not willing to be rehabilitated? They cannot be in our community without being rehabilitated. I don't believe ISS will, will accept him. Uh, probation, the sex offender, the SOMU, had, that was their original recommendation. So I, okay. I think they would, um, based on that, but I, the court is much more knowledgeable on those aspects. Well, you know, I mean, we're all open to learning things. Probation, if you can look into that and defense, do you have a witness to call? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I do. Uh, I would call Mr. Scarborough. All right. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. You can lower your hand, state your name for the record. All right. You're going to need to speak up. Arthur Scarborough. All right. Defense. <laughs> no, just let's everyone just speak up. Um, Mr. Scarborough, you understand why you're here? Yes. Okay. And and the uh, at the 
have a brain swell. The polygraph, uh, they said that you denied liability or culpability. Is that correct? Yes. So did you ever deny that this thing happened? No. Okay. And you're tell the court what your thinking was. At the time, I, I didn't want to believe that it happened. Um, and I accept 100% responsibility and not partial responsibility. Mm -hmm. I accept 100% responsibility. And so it was about the who instigated the, the right. start of this. Right. Because when you took your polygraph, you said that, that she was as much of an aggressor as you were. That's not true. That's not true. And that you were the I was, I was instigated. The aggressor and I accept responsibility. And that was the reason that he was expelled from the program. Right. State, do you have any questions? Maybe true. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm clear and I'm understanding is that you reported initially um, to your sex offender provider um, that this was one unwanted and not provoked um, or initiated by you. Do you remember telling the I, I, You did say that. Yes. And are you telling this court now that that statement is not true? That's not true. Okay, that you did that this was wanted and that it was provoked by you. Right. Okay. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of time to think it over, especially while I was incarcerated for 61 days and then I'm on house arrest for the 35 days. And I, I, I realized that I am the one that's the fault. Okay. Do you remember having a conversation with your sex offender provider, um, Ms. Vicki Elliott, um, and her giving you that opportunity? Say, I say the truth. Yes, and at that time, uh, I didn't want to believe that that was the truth. And isn't it true that when she confronted with you with you about this and letting you know that you'd be exited from the program and that you would potentially have an MTR, that you still at that point decided that you weren't willing to take responsibility? I did take responsibility, and I told her at that time that I accept one hundred percent responsibility. But it's, I still stuck to the story that I wasn't one hundred percent at fault as the aggressor. But I, I realized after thinking it over for so much time that that is I'm one hundred percent. Okay, but you also accept the responsibility, and I wish to continue the truth. And you understand there's a distinction between it's not really taking responsibility to say that a child provoked this, right? That's not really taking responsibility. You understand that. So when you said initially you took responsibility, that's not really taking responsibility. When I talked to the counselor after I felt the I'm sorry. I can't hear you. When I talked to the counselor after I felt the polygraph test, I, I did take responsibility. Okay. But uh, to her that wasn't a good enough answer. Okay. So you're still you saying that it happened, but that the child provoked it and that it was no. unwanted is taking 100% no. responsibility. No, that's not Okay. I, I accept 100% responsibility. The child did not get I'll pass away. Any Later. other questions? Pardon? Any other questions? Um, I just want the court to know, tell the court about your health issues that we're dealing with. My, my health issues, I have a terminal illness. It's Vegamore's biggest sale of the year. Invest in your hair wellness routine by starting in the shower. Over it's called cystic fibrosis. It affects my lungs, mainly my digestive system and sinuses. Uh, I have chronic sinusitis. That's uh, why you wear the mask. Yes, I can't be around. I'm real leery of germs. Um, I have ulcerative colitis, and I have obstructive sleep apnea, where I have to be on a CPAP machine. All of those things that I, I didn't get the proper medications and things like that when I was incarcerated. Um, and I don't want to go through that again. And other than that one violation, uh, you're behind a little in the money because you didn't pay while you were I was, while I was incarcerated. Yes. But other than that, there are no new offenses. No new offenses. Uh, and that you are the, uh, the transportation for your mother. Yes. And your mother goes to the doctor, hospital. Yes. At least once a week, a uh, couple times a month, to the pharmacy as well. To the I think for grocery shopping, she's going to be 88 years old in a couple months. I'm the primary caregiver. 
which I've not been able to do for the last uh, 95 days since I was locked up and in a hospital. And she lives on your street? She lives 100 yards from me, but I can't go and see her. Because of the monitor? Because of the monitor. A little house rents. And I'm the one who takes care of her. Uh, my, my sister has had to take off work and suffer financial problems because of that. All right, anything else? One further question. Jen. Yes. Did you have cystic fibrosis when you committed this offense? Uh, yes, I was born with cystic fibrosis. Okay. Uh, genetic terminal illness. I have no further questions, but I just wanted to make the board aware that Ms. Vicki Ellie is here. The board has any questions for her um, as far as probation is concerned. All right. Would you like to call Ms. Elliott? Events? Sorry. No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, any other witnesses from either side? No, ma'am. State, what are you requesting? Judge, I, I, I'm going to request that this court um, revoke his supervision at this point. I, it's you, You've prosecuted cases, you have defended cases. I think this is a clear case where he still is. He's saying, well, I'm I took 100% responsibility afterwards, but that's just not the case. That's why we're here. That's why he pled true, is that he didn't take responsibility. Um, and that there is this, the inability at this point for the state to do anything other to ensure that our community is safe um, from him potentially reoffending. Um, and that would be to place him in a corrections department so that he can't have access to children. Um, you know, this is a case that, you know, obviously the state recommended initially, but that was, you know, the court's aware that we do that in certain circumstances due to victim cooperativeness, cooperativeness and really in times taking consideration the further well-being of victims. Um, I think he was given an opportunity. He continues to not take it seriously or, or make good efforts in progressing his treatment. And so we're going to ask the court to revoke his community supervision and civil symptoms. All right. Uh, defense, what are you requesting? And Your Honor, we're asking that you leave him on probation. He's done 60 days in jail. He's been on monitor for 30 house arrest for 30 days, 30 something days. Um, that he's uh, he completely admitted today in open court that he was the aggressor, wasn't the child's fault in any way. I, I'm not sure what the state was speaking of when he said he's not accepting responsibility. He's, he's telling me that he he did it and he admits he did it and it was his fault. And, uh, you know, he had time to think about it in jail and all, you know, but this is 100% responsible for this and it was his fault. I would ask you to leave him on probation. Uh, he's committed no other offenses. Uh, you know, he's been a pretty good, uh, other than this one thing, pretty good probationer. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Is there anything else for me to decide? Nothing for the concern. All right. The court is going to grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you to 10 years in prison, give you credit for any time served, Chapter 62 registration, no contact with the complainants, showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Uh, you do have a limited right to appeal, and that is as it relates to the allegation in the motion, not the fact that you were on probation. Because. Ain't the dog anymore.